Good morning. Thank you to ASFPM for the opportunity to talk about the successes, challenges, and opportunities that we have in the National Flood Insurance Program. And it's uh, certainly a pleasure to join this panel of distinguished women who have all substantially contributed to the public discussion uh, surrounding the NFIP. As you're all well aware, this summer marks an important milestone for all of us who work in the NFIP. August 1st commemorates the 50th anniversary of the National Flood Insurance Act of 1968, which created the NFIP. I want to start by recognizing the hard work of our industry, state and local partners over the last 50 years. With you, we've been able to build a legacy of helping before, during, and after a disaster. We know from experience that residents and businesses with flood insurance recover faster than those that are uninsured. And we continue to strive to inform individuals and communities about risk, about insurance needs, and a broad array of mitigation activities. As Larry mentioned, in the last 50 years, the program has grown to over 5 million policies in force, providing $1.27 trillion of coverage in over 22,300 participating communities in all 50 states and territories. We identified flood hazards for local communities by mapping riverine and coastal areas, mapping over one million miles. We have assisted local communities in floodplain management, providing $10 million annually to states to help in lowering the exposure, their exposure to risk. We have provided over $1 billion in mitigation assistance grants across our flood mitigation assistance, repetitive flood claims, and severe rep loss grant programs. Today, 1,466 communities participate in the community rating system, taking action and achieving higher than minimum standards for flood protection. Overall, more than 4 million insured properties and 2.3 million policyholders have been impacted by flood damage in 98% of the counties across the U.S. And the NFIP has provided over $64 billion to help insured survivors recover from flood events. Simply put, for the past half century, the NFIP has proved to meet a number of critical public policy objectives and has made significant impact in communities across the nation. Communities are more resilient because of floodplain management and actions taken by mitigation grants. And flood insurance is the best way for homeowners, renters, and businesses to financially protect themselves and the lives they've built from, fl from floods across the nation. So please join me in recognizing all the hard work that all of us have, uh, have put in to make the program a success over the last 50 years. So while much has been accomplished, there's a lot of work to be done, as been indicated by the panel. In 2015, the NFIP began to make a generational change as we prepared to enter our second 50 years. As part of that generational change, we're emphasizing customers first. We're reducing program complexity. We're updating our product offering, the way we rate insurance policies on, based on risk, and an improved suite of insurance policies. We're improving the way we handle claims and appeals. We're improving the way we analyze risk and the way we communicate that risk. We produced an affordability framework to provide options to policymakers to consider how to help close the insurance gap by reducing the cost burden of flood insurance for those that truly need it. And we continue to increase transparency for our customers. We're doing all of this for two reasons. We want to cultivate value and trust in our program, and we want to ensure more homes, families, businesses, renters, and others against flood losses, so that in the aftermath of a flood, 
whether it's a presidentially declared disaster or smaller localized flooding that's going on in a half a dozen different areas across the country today, there are more insured survivors and less disaster suffering. This week you will hear from many of my colleagues about the changes and improvements that we're making. This conference is important to us because it gives us an opportunity to engage with you, our partners. There are 68 of us from FEMA here. That's a pretty remarkable, pretty remarkable number. We were able to send so many uh, because FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security recognize how important you are to building a culture of preparedness and a resilient nation. My team and I will speak at 46 sessions this week. Hopefully you've already caught some of them and there are plenty more to go. And we have five booths in the exhibit hall where we are eager to talk with you about more of what we're doing and hear more about what you're doing. While you're here from my team this week about all the work we're doing in insurance, mapping, mitigation, and floodplain management in support of the NFIP, I want to use my time this morning to tell you why we are doing these things. As a result of last year's historic hurricane season, the NFIP paid out more than $9.1 billion to more than 125,000 policyholders. We know that after every disaster, no matter where or what size, that there is an incredible difference between the insured survivor and the uninsured disaster survivor. The insured survivor can begin to repair and rebuild to get started putting their lives back together almost immediately when our advanced payment process is activated. The survivor without flood insurance is on a very different path usually one of despair, anxiety, and regret. They anguish over their uncertain future. It may mean using up their savings, adding additional debt, or even the loss of their home. We have the power to change that paradigm. This week you will hear from everyone at FEMA talking about our new FEMA strategic plan and our three goals. We are building a culture of preparedness, we're readying the nation for catastrophic disaster, and we're reducing the complexity of FEMA. My part of FEMA, the Federal Insurance and Mitigation Administration, contributes to all three of these goals. Our work to close the insurance gap and incentivize mitigation investments are key elements of building a culture of preparedness, which will lead to more resilient communities and a more resilient nation. More insured survivors, and more mitigation investment will mean less disaster suffering when disaster strikes. And our customer-centric transformation across the NFIP and mitigation will help to reduce complexity and streamline the disaster survivor and grantee experience. Last year, you started to hear about our moonshots. Before the strategic plan was written and before the catastrophic 2017 uh, disasters, FEMA set two moonshots for insurance and mitigation. We will double the number of properties covered by flood insurance across the nation, and we will quadruple the nation's mitigation investments by 2022. These moonshots are a key to building a culture of pre preparedness and making us more resilient. If you need an easy way to remember the moonshots, here it is. More insured survivors, less disaster suffering. So I know what you're thinking. Promoting insurance makes us uncomfortable. Selling flood insurance is hard. People don't want to buy flood insurance because they don't think they need it or it's too expensive. And in some ways we haven't made it easy to convince them otherwise. I've been an insurance agent, I get it. I also know how hard it is for a local mayor to prioritize mitigation investments and to encourage citizens to buy insurance when there are so many competing priorities and immediate demands for their community's limited resources. I've been an elected official, as Larry mentioned. I can identify with the difficult choices that must be made. But I also know how hard it is to talk to an uninsured survivor after a disaster 
when they're feeling afraid, overwhelmed, and completely unsure of how they will recover. And I know how relieved an insured survivor feels when I'm talking with them, and they can see their path forward and know that they have the resources to get back in their home and back to work because they were insured. I also know what it's like to visit a community after a disaster, to see them struggle because they either had low insurance take up or little mitigation activity before the storm. It's hard to talk to mayors and community leaders about their challenges, getting schools and hospitals back open, waiting for shops and businesses to get back up and running, and wanting to quickly get their citizens back to work and their lives in order, all while knowing it will be months or years to do so. But I also know firsthand what it's like when a community is resilient and able to bounce back after a disaster. My hometown, Beatrice, Nebraska, was able to bounce back after the 93 Midwest floods because for 20 years prior, we had a consistent mitigation program with a buyout program, buying out properties that were at risk from the Big Blue River. Ours was an example of mitigation in action. Our recovery period was shorter and easier because of the mitigation actions that had been taken over a course of a period of time. Let me be clear. We must close the insurance gap in our country and double the number of flood insurance coverage in this nation. And we need to quadruple, quadruple the mitigation investment across the nation, focusing on before a disaster hits, along with the post-disaster assistance. Across FEMA, we are engaging all of our partners and working hard to get emergency managers and others like floodplain managers more focused on insurance and mitigation. You are critical to our achieving our moonshots. You are trusted agents in your communities that can talk with citizens, not only about reducing their risk, but also having the right insurance coverage. Our administrator, Brock Long, has made it clear that Flood insurance and the NFIP will continue to be a top priority for FEMA. He has not only endorsed the program, but he's joined our ranks, helping us spread the message that insurance is the first line of defense for disaster recovery. Thank you for your ideas and your work that you're doing to help us close the insurance gap and increase investment in mitigation. Let me, let me end by emphasizing more insured survivors less disaster suffering. Together we will achieve resiliency for our communities and our nations. I invite all of you to join me and my leadership team uh, at FEMA tonight at the FEMA Resilience Forum uh, starting at uh, 5.15. We look forward to talking with you and hearing your ideas tonight. Thank you. <laughs>